Hello and welcome back to our quest series. In the last episode we added the kill type of objective and in this episode we're going to go through and add the location type of objective. As well as that we're also going to add in a little notifier to indicate to the player when they've entered a new location. So let's begin. So we've done interaction and now we've done killing. We're now going to add in a location objective. So reaching a certain location. So for this, we need some kind of way to trigger a location marker going off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a location marker uh, actor that will tell the player what location they're in. Let's go into our blueprint class actor and let's go location marker. Open this up and we're going to add in here a simple box collision. And all we're going to do is have a variable in here which determines what is the name of our location and also the objective ID as well. Let's go to the variables here and add in location name. That'll be a text field. And we're also going to have objective ID, which will be a string, as like the other two systems we've made use as well. Okay, uh, we will make both of these editable. And then on the event graph, we're going to do act to begin overlap. Uh, first of all, we'll check that the other actor is the player character. So we do equals, actually we'll do a cast two. We need a cast, so cast two first person character anyway. And when that happens, we are taking as first person character and doing call objective ID called. And we'll plug in the objective ID. Um, we'll do the widget in a second, but that should do it there. So let's go add that to our quest data. So let's go add another objective to our quest here. And this one is going to be reach um, the location. And description will be reach the desired location on the other side of the map. And it'll be our location type and the objective ID will put in a uh, target location. With location, your quantity will typically always be one, but you never know, you could have multiple, but one is definitely uh, going to be the minimum use. And I'm going to save that there. So now we should be able to complete this. So I need to, need to copy that objective ID target location and drag that location marker into my scene. So I'm just going to put that over here um, on this back wall here, scale it up like that. Okay. I'll hit play, pick up the quest, accept. Now I've got three quest objectives. Okay. And then if I head over to here, Oh, wait, did I not put in the objective ID? Let's take a look at that. Nope, I didn't put the objective ID in. That would help. Target location. And uh, we'll give it a location there as well. Other side. We'll call it. Right, let's do it again. Get the quest. Accept. And. Up. There you go. Reach the desired location on the other side of the map. Destroy three target dummies and interact with a strange object. So very easy and quick to add the location in. So this particular location actor is just a trigger that we have made. Uh, but this one in particular, we're going to make it um, trigger a widget on the screen to tell us what location we're at. So we'll just make a quick UI thing for this. We'll go user widget, location, notify. And we're going to add a canvas panel to our widget here. And inside this, we're going to have a piece of text. The text, we're going to make a slide in and slide back out. So I'm just going to position this where I want it to be. So let's go, keep it in the top left, but we're going to position it down a bit, say 100. Yeah, something like that. Uh, size wise, we'll just take size to content, but position X here is going to start way off the screen here. So we're going to start that off as a um, negative, 50 for example now at the moment as you can see negative 50 just 
drops it off here. Now I could increase that to minus uh, 300 for example. That way the text definitely comes off the screen. But let's say for example that location name is now longer and that is now going to cause issue because it's going to click through no matter what. So what we do is we'll just leave it at minus 50 for now. But we're going to change its alignment. So go to the first alignment box which is the X. It says zero. That means the left hand side. If I change it to one it means the right hand side. And now you see it's lining up the coordinates with the right hand side of the object now. That way it will stop it from ever coming in. Okay, so with this we're going to make a little uh, animation for this as well. So we go animation, fly in we'll call it. And we're going to add the text track to our animation. We're going to add a new track here for transform. And we're going to translate it across. So I'm going to hit a new key for the transform. Move it over to 0.5 seconds. And then we'll slide it along in the X to its in view. To 250. There we go. So it goes across like so. And that is it. I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to add another keyframe when I want it to disappear. Uh, 4.5 there. Add a keyframe. File save. So I'm not changing it, just making it appear there. So my graph for this, we need to know what name we want it to show. So the text value we're going to put in here be location name. And that would be a text field. And that would be editable and exposed on spawn. That way we can set the location name as we create it when we walk through that volume. We also need to make the text widget, this thing, variable too. So make it variable and let's name it location, which is a graph. And it should now appear there in our variable list. We'll drag this out. And in the pre-construct, we set its text. And we're going to set it to our location name, text variable that we just made. So as I said, because we've exposed it on spawn, we can send over the location name we want to use here. So when we go to our location marker and we overlap it, we're going to create widget. And you're going to choose the location notifier, giving it the location name be the variable from our location marker. We're then going to tell this thing to add to viewport so we can see it. And there you go. Next we're going to go to the location notifier again and on here we're going to take to start that animation. On event construct you'll see animations on your left hand side in the variables list. So I go fly in and we'll do play forwards. You'll see play animation forward that in and when it's finished animation we want to clear it so we're going to right click and do finish animation and you'll see animation finished flying and we're just going to simple do simply do a remove from parent a super simple setup for our location notifier so when i walk through that box now oh would help if i pick up the quest first and then go through. You see other side has now appeared there on the left. Okay. There you go. We've now got location objectives. And there we have it. We've now got a location type objective available to us to use for our quests. In the next episode, we're going to add the last type of objective, which is a collection objective. This is when we scan your inventory to find out if you've got enough of a certain item. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early before everyone else. Thank you for everyone who subscribed over on Patreon for their continued support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.